This is your Weather Extreme video for Saturday, March the 18th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks so much for tuning in. And before I forget it, there's our schedule of storm spotter training uh, sessions that we have coming up across central Alabama. The next one in Clay County in Lineville. Uh, at the EMA office, also Farmer's Market, uh, kind of between Lineville and Asheville. Hope to see you there. Satellite image this morning shows that we do have uh, a bit of uh, cloudiness across the northern uh, half of Alabama approximately. It's clear over the southern part and down along the Gulf Coast. Uh, that will be changing later today as the front that is uh, producing this weather is moving down across the southeastern United States and that will be clearing the area later today, and so I think most of us will turn dry for the afternoon. In the upper atmosphere, we're dealing with this uh, bit of a uh, trough over the eastern part of the country, and that's going to allow temperatures to drop a little bit. Uh, we'll be fairly mild for today, but we should drop a little bit for tonight and tomorrow, as well as for Monday morning. Temperatures uh, at the time of this writing were generally around the 60 degree mark for much of central Alabama, a little bit cooler in the Tennessee River Valley where they're getting some rain-cooled air. Speaking of rain-cooled air, radar shows that we do have a bit of a, uh, uh, say, a uh, zone of showers. It's not really a, a line extending from about center across Coleman and into the uh, Haleyville, Hamilton uh, area. The watch warning map is fairly quiet uh, compared to recent days anyway. Uh, the grays are dense fog advisories. We see some uh, purples over Pennsylvania that are winter weather advisories. And then we have uh, some greens over the northern Rockies that are a combination of flood advisories and flash flood watches. QPF-wise, uh, the main rain event is coming uh, this morning, and that rain event is not expected to produce just a lot of rain for us as the showers will move through fairly quickly. Uh, the next rain event will be Wednesday, but it's going to be very, very scattered uh, and, and pretty much maybe even isolated, so we don't expect to see much rain. The Storm Prediction Center is out looking uh, thunderstorms over a, a variety of spots across the country, including an area that stretches across central Alabama. Uh, we may, uh, there's enough instability, we may hear uh, a little bit of thunder. For day two, uh, there's a marginal risk over um, parts of uh, Iowa, Illinois, and northern uh, Missouri. And then for day three, uh, we see that there's just thunderstorms over a good portion of the Tennessee and Ohio River Valleys stretching back into Oklahoma. All right, the 06C GFS model run. And there's our, our fairly uh, sizable trough over the eastern part of the country. And that is uh, digging in nicely and allowing us to have a cooler air for the weekend. We can see the frontal zone uh, on the map moving uh, through central Alabama. Again, that should be clearing much of central Alabama by uh, noontime and definitely by 1, 2 o'clock. I think all the rain will be out of the area for sure. But I think between about 11 and 1 or so, most of the area will be uh, coming dry. The trough does dig in nicely uh, just along the east coast on Sunday. So you see we have a good northwesterly flow, so that will cool things down once again as temperatures drop to uh, lows uh, on Sunday morning around the 40-degree mark. That means some of those cooler spots will get into the 30s. The trough moves off, but we still have a bit of northwesterly flow. Plus, on Monday, the uh, high is settling in over the southeastern U.S. You see by midday, by 1 o'clock or so, it's uh, basically over Apalachicola. And so uh, Monday morning will probably be just as cold as we will be Sunday morning, but for slightly different reason. We should be clear, uh, have clear skies, so radiational cooling should uh, really cool us off with, once again, temperatures possibly dipping into the mid and upper 30s with a little patchy frost possible. I don't expect widespread frost. For Tuesday, uh, we see the upper air pattern. We go more into a bit of a ridge. Uh, but in the meantime, because of the big trough off to our northeast, uh, uh, it does drag a bit of a front down into the Ohio River Valley. I think it stays north of us so that we stay dry. Uh, the ridge is uh, still there, but kind of uh, almost backed up a little bit to the west. But notice there's a little uh, disturbance over parts of Kentucky and eastern Tennessee. Uh, and that is enough to probably push the frontal zone down into our area on Wednesday. I think most of us will stay dry, but it's one of those things where, yeah, there'll be a few showers on radar, isolated though they may be, uh, so we'll have to put in a small probability for showers. 
We return to dry weather on Thursday as the ridge comes back in, so that uh, will help us to warm back up uh, nicely. The ridge moves over the east coast on Friday, and that puts us in a very strong southwesterly flow. Uh, so that's going to do two things. It's going to help us to warm up. Uh, and in combination with the southerly flow at the surface, we're going to see moisture increase dramatically. And so that means that that front you see out over Oklahoma and uh, north central Texas, stretching from that uh, low over uh, uh, just south of uh, Lake Superior, you, that is going to be moving our way. And uh, so we'll be seeing the possibility of some severe weather potential on Friday to our west and Saturday in our area. Now, it's too early to be very specific about this, but the, uh, the dynamics seem to be there. There's a couple of possibilities, and I'll talk about those in just a second. There's the upper air pattern for Saturday as that trough moves briskly across the eastern part of the country. That will drag the front down into the southeastern U.S. during the middle of the day on Saturday. But there's a couple of problems. Uh, the first issue is that we do have instability. Uh, values range from about 1,400 to 1,900 joules per kilogram. So we certainly have uh, pretty substantial instability uh, present. The problem is when we look at the uh, storm relative helicity, uh, 0 to 3 kilometers, uh, which is a measure basically of the amount of shear, the shear is offset from the cape values. So it could be one of those things where we have some high cape values and get thunderstorms and don't get much in the way of severe weather. But the prudent thing is to keep a close eye on how this develops over the next week or so. Looking out into voodoo country, and the GFS is uh, very bullish on a pretty big ridge over the eastern two-thirds of the country around the 27th of March, so that's pretty warm. We see a nice uh, trough coming through the flow around the 29th, so that spells some stormy weather, especially for the central part of the U.S. There's another one, a little bit lower uh, latitude on the, the 31st of March, which once again has the look and potential of some uh, severe weather. And then when we get out to the end of the period, around the 2nd of April, looks like April's going to start on a warm note. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. Expect to have the next one posted first thing on Sunday morning. In the meantime, you can uh, uh, catch notes on the blog here about Alabama's weather. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day. Stay dry and Godspeed.